Power Boat Television, North America's premier boating show. Time for My Boat. Your instruments are a direct link to the status of your engines, so having a complete and accurate set is critical to the monitoring of your engine's health and long-term life. So this week on My Boat, we'll cover some troubleshooting tips and take you through a complete instrument package upgrade. Since the back of many panels are awkward to work on, I recommend that you start by removing the entire instrument panel from the helm side, if at all possible, for this project. A bad tack usually displays the following symptoms. It's dead, it's pegged, it's erratic, it reads high, it reads low, or it's sticky. If a tack is dead, it is usually caused by no power, no signal, or it has been electrically damaged by disconnecting the battery when the engine is running. To test for a dead tack, first test for a power supply to the instrument's power and ground terminals with a multimeter to ensure 12 or more volts are present. Next, test to see if a signal is present by checking for a voltage reading between the signal terminal and ground of approximately 2 volts. If the tachometer is reading high or low, it's usually because the switch at the back has been set incorrectly for a 4-cylinder, 6-cylinder, or V8 in the case of a gasoline engine, or in the case of diesels, it's not been calibrated correctly. For troubleshooting most of your boat's other instruments, here's a few tips, starting with one for a sticky or stuck gauge. Start by loosening the nut on the mounting bracket on the back and loosen up the gauge to see if that frees the needle. Testing your remaining gauges, like this oil pressure gauge, is similar. First start by checking for 12 or more volts between the power and ground terminals. To test gauge operation and the sending units, first turn off the ignition and connect a jumper wire between the S or signal terminal and the G or ground terminal. When the ignition is powered on and the gauges register a full deflection under these conditions, it's good. If the needle only partially deflects, the gauge is faulty. Erratic readings are usually caused by bad wiring or connections, so the complete circuit must be traced and tested. To check the status of a sender, such as an oil pressure, water tamp, or fuel gauge sender, remove the jumper, then locate the sending unit on the engine. Next, remove the sending unit lead wire from the unit, and using a jumper, ground the signal wire to a good ground on the engine. When the ignition is turned on again, and if the needle fully deflects, the gauge is good, and the sender may be at fault. Ultimately, if your gauges prove to be faulty or inaccurate, or are fogged or have that weathered look from exposure to the elements, you may wish to consider a complete new instrument package. The best advice I can give you when replacing a complete set of instruments, especially when confronted with the maze of wires required for a dual engine instrument panel, is to replace one instrument at a time to ensure all of the wires are reconnected correctly. Start by removing the back clamp and any wires that will require new connectors to mate to the new instruments. In the case of this upgrade from the boat's original gauges to the new Faria gauges, all of the blue wires for the lighting would have to be converted from ring to female spade terminals. A simple task of cutting off the old, stripping the wire, and crimping on the new marine grade connectors. With that task completed, the remaining power, ground, and signal wires can be disconnected. Next, pop out the old instruments and slide in the new. Depending on the style of the new back clamp, it may have to be installed first. Next, secure the instruments with the supplied washers and nuts, remembering to hand tighten only, then align the gauge. Finally, reconnect the wires to the appropriate ground, power, signal, and lighting connections as marked on the back of the gauge and tighten the nuts securely. With one gauge complete, simply move on to the remaining gauges, one at a time until the job is done. Finally, with all of the gauges wired, reinstall the instrument panel, fire up the engines, and check all of the gauges for accuracy. Well, there you have it. With the basic technical specs for your instruments, along with a voltmeter, you can test everything from your tachometer to your fuel gauge. And if you do find problems, as you've just seen, replacing the gauges is not that difficult of a task.